Hi again and welcome. Wow. Again, I just want to say thank you for being here. I know from, you know, reading your reflections and answering some emails and uh, yeah, we're all, we're all going through some stuff and, and that's life. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> we go through so many different things, so many wonderful things and maybe not so wonderful things. And again, I just hmm, want to just remind you that this practice is actually, it was developed as a way of life. Uh, just more, as I've been mentioning, much more than an exercise system. Um, and then again, it depends on how you, um, what your wonderful definition is of exercise. It could be a, a various um, um, things. And, but it is, I would say when I think of exercise, yeah, I don't know the proper definition, but it's more like um, doing and um, getting, you know, stronger and doing those 25 push-ups or 50 um, sit ups, uh, there's more of do 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 <laughs> of different exercises, um, different things that your body does. And yeah, I didn't probably, I should have looked up that definition, but I'm sure there's again a number of different definitions of exercise. And I'm emphasizing a way of life today, uh, even more so because. Yeah, I've been mentioning the eight limbs of yoga. Uh, yeah, so you might get a nice seated um, spot as I bring more of, of the eight limbs to yoga, to your um, awareness. Some of you know of them, and, and I've also mentioned them last week as well. Uh, eight limbs being uh, the first two limbs of ethical precepts, the yamas and the niyamas how we treat ourselves, how we treat others, how we live in the world, <laughs> how we practice our yoga. And of course, our asanas, the, the physical part, the postures of the yoga practice, of the yoga way, and the breathing. Oh, it's, a, it's amazing. And we'll go over a new breathing today as well. Um, yeah, very powerful. Well, that just changes our energy and balances our nervous system in different ways. Isn't that amazing that yogis thousands of years ago knew of this because they could feel it. They could be mindful. They could be in the moment feeling and so aware of their energy within. Yeah, that's amazing. And of course, then after their breathing, we kind of that helps us also withdraw our senses of all the busyness out there. We withdraw and come inside. The breath helps us again to come inside. Some of us, I know, as you mentioned, and I know perfectly myself, we get distracted when we practice maybe our seated postures or our, our reclining postures. Yeah, and then we, our mind starts to wander. Bring it back to the breath. Bring it back. Bring it all back to the breath because that helps to eliminate all the, the busyness in, in the world as we come back to the moment, come back to the breath. Withdraw the senses leads into a more of a, mm, a concentration of what's going on inside as we then can, yeah, listen to that, that edge. Don't go too far, too fast, too soon. In any posture, right? We listen to see what's comfortable, what is ah, doable at the time. Concentration leads into ah, that, that meditative state where we're just one with the breath. Ah, thinking mind has gone on that vacation. Yeah. And when that meditation lasts longer, then yeah, there's a moment of, of pure contentment, pure bliss, as they say. And these can be, oh, lived in so many, so many ways, really. Now, the very first limb, as I've mentioned, of the yamas, more the ethical precepts. Um, yeah, the moral and ethical ways of living. Um, 
not untoward. I'm sure you've heard of all of these before. <laughs> but did you know that they were practicing yoga? Yes. The first yama that will concentrate on this, the yamas, concentrate more on this week of the yamas. Um, the first yama is non-harming. And I think from day one, I mentioned, yeah, listen to the edge. Don't go too far, too fast, too soon. Do not harm yourself. Non-harming, yes, in our practice, we listen, we're in the moment. We don't, yeah, do something that would harm us. So we're when we stay in the moment, when we stay in the breath, we're more apt to go into this practice with safety. So that's why I always emphasize, ah, breathe, be in the moment. Um, Non-harming, also in our thoughts. Energy of our thoughts can be very non-harming if we're in that negative space all the time. Yeah, because remember where your energy goes, where your, where your attention goes, energy flows. Even in your thoughts, that's our whole visualization, of visualizing the release, the letting go of tension, visualizing the most beautiful place for you to, yeah, be in your relaxation. Yeah. So again, non-harming in your thoughts um, and non-harming in your actions, of course. Non-harming, the first yama is kind of like uh, the, the golden rule. Yeah. Do unto others as you would have done, like to have done to you or do to yourself like you would like to do others treat you <laughs> both ways. But yeah, non-harming, yeah, in your thoughts, in your actions, not to, yeah, not to harm others, not to harm yourself. And yeah, and 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 one way also of non-harming is maybe to have more patience with yourself and and others. Yeah, to mm, to Oh, have more compassion. That that might be helpful too. So moving to the second yama is being truthful. How lovely. <laughs> not to lie. Yeah, not to boast or brag about things, but to be truthful. To practice honesty in your practice, of course. To be truthful to yourself is also being non-harmful to yourself. Yeah. Not to go into that wheel and the leg lifting and just push it through, through the next variation, but to go with gentleness, to go with um, honesty, <laughs> really to be truthful. So you don't go and just barrel through your practice. Be truthful. Listen. Very throat chakra-esque, isn't it? To listen, to listen to your truth, to listen to others. Yeah, as you speak, as you be your truth. Yeah, to be truthful. Hmm, practicing honesty. Yeah, especially if we're in the habit of, oh, boasting a bit, bragging a bit. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think we might, do that at times, but again, being truthful is bringing more, and, and from the not harming, more compassion to your life and, and to listen to others with an open, loving heart, yeah. And then the third uh, yama is, yep, not to steal. Not only objects, you wouldn't want to steal objects, uh, of course, um, from, <laughs> How, how old were you or when you knew that you should not steal? Yeah. Not to steal object, not to steal um, ideas from people as well. Sometimes, I think there's a movie of Mel Gibson. I forgot uh, what the name is. Uh, but yeah, he stole somebody's idea. And then he, he presented it as his own. And it was a great idea in some business. Uh, so yeah, so non-stealing, not to take people's ideas or objects, um, and even time. I know 
sometimes when we meet a friend or something where we're right on time and then others were not and then they have to wait for us is that stealing their time they could have been doing something else so yeah these um wonderful yamas and these precepts can be taken in so many ways um and not to steal like how how do you do that in your yoga practice itself um in your working in postures is not to um perform a posture that you already know that's not safe that's not right for you but then you want it because maybe the person next to you is doing it and so <laughs> you're kind of stealing their um their thunder so to speak if they're doing a quite a advanced event, uh, variation let's say so these are also all these yamas are, are practicing yes in your life but also in your posture practice as well asana practice so non-stealing yeah maybe um another aspect of that uh would be more to give yeah to, to give of your service to give maybe uh to, to charity yeah to give maybe some of your belongings that you don't need anymore yes to give to a charity of sorts yeah so and then from non-stealing is Mm, uh, being uh, from non-stealing and as I have a little note here oh your energy and from day one yeah everything in moderation I mentioned not to go too fast too soon um, in your postures to go and use the right effort yeah if you go too fast too soon what happens you might injure yourself if you go into a, a deeper stretch than what your body is not able to go into. So again, non-harming, <laughs> uh, moderation in your energy use. Moderation in, yeah, not too much food, not too little food, but just the right amount. Uh, and, and yeah, in, in your life. And so this is just a way, again, of living, <laughs> as, as we all are. and. And just, um, I guess, being in the moment again helps us not to waste our energy or not to use too much. Just be in the moment. Listen, as I've mentioned in class many times, just listen to your body. Yeah, is it ready? Is it ready to go into that deeper stretch? Is it ready to go to that next level? Are you able to let go of the resistance so then you can move into a new space? Maybe yes. Maybe no, but again, it's bringing uh, a mindfulness will help with all of these, wouldn't that? Yeah, from the not taking more than we need, or or, or not to take what others, yeah. Uh, oh, taking more than you need. Did you notice I just mentioned that? That's more like the fifth yama of non greed. That leads us into. Similar to the third of non-stealing, but the fifth yama is not taking more than we need. Maybe feeling of a lack of abundance, and we have to take more. Uh, I guess, yeah, like an extreme of this would be hoarders, as um, the name um, has. Yeah, <laughs> there's a name attached to this, but yeah, taking or maybe just taking. Uh oh, maybe taking not taking a thirty-minute shower, but maybe a, a five. Or, or a 10 minute shower, not taking more resources than we need. So everything again in moderation <laughs> from the fourth yama, they kind of, yeah, they all blend together, don't they? A bit, non-greed, yeah. And letting go of attachments too, letting go of certain ways of doing things. Oh, you must do this, do, 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 do. this way is the only way to do it. Or maybe not, maybe there is another way. So we're in, the fifth yama, we're more open of letting go of attachments, letting go of the control, some things we can control, and it's it's probably healthy, maybe in that way, but certain things we don't have control over, and then we have to let go, and maybe then find a new way of thinking, of doing maybe a posture, maybe you do the posture the same way every, every, every time, and maybe that's healthful for you. 
But then being mindful and being also more open to maybe practicing the next variation if it's comfortable, if you feel like you're strong enough or have enough flexibility. Yeah, I th it's interesting. I keep coming back to being more mindful about all of your life, actually, right? Yeah, taking, giving yourself, even now, giving yourself this time to be more mindful, how to practice your yoga, what variation will be comfortable for you. And then also letting go of attachments and the non-greediness of holding on to things. It brings on new possibilities, maybe even new opportunities. As you let go of that tension you have in your hamstrings, finally letting it go. Oh, that means I can be more flexible, maybe in my lunges as well, and in my wide angle strides. Oh, and more space there, more opportunities. Yeah. And, or letting go of ways of maybe even, um, I was going to say, mowing your lawn for some reason. What? <laughs> maybe mow it in a different way. Oh, maybe you got to a new space in your lawn that needed a little, yeah, reverbishing. I, I don't know. So non-greed, yeah, not taking more than you need letting go of the attachments, one ways of doing things. So that allows, yeah, the release of energy to flow in different ways. Letting go. Yeah. And again, from day one, have you heard me say, letting go of the tension, melting, and, and letting go of, of course, of not taking um, more than, than you really need. So again, from non-harming, from the very first yama to being truthful in all your deeds and your actions, being truthful, not to take what is not yours uh, in th thoughts and words and deeds as well, and everything in moderation. And yeah, not greed, not to take more than you. Yeah. And sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But these are wonderful precepts to live your life. And just reflect, yeah, even in our practice today. So let's come down to the ground, shall we? I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being here in this moment. You practice, I would say, more mindfully even. Yeah, it just opens up another door, the yamas. And I'll review them next time as well. And um, next week, we'll venture into the niyamas. And there is an extra credit uh, assignment if you look in the next module that you might want to participate in. The, uh, again, it's just a, a written submission. Yeah, so it's all good. So let's lie down, shall we? Okay, knees bent, feet to the earth. Ah, doesn't that feel good? Yeah, so just roll the knees side to side just to relax the lower back if you're sitting of uh, that time and maybe an awkward position. I don't know. But yeah, it feels good for my back. So hopefully this feels good for yours. Connecting the feet to the earth. Uh, you might even lift up in a baby bridge, lifting the hips up and slowly lowering each vertebra one by one by one by one. Maybe lifting a little higher the second time. Deep breath. The breath is oh so in unified with the movement. Exhale, lowering, uh, lengthen out through the crown, out through the base of the spine, down through the legs, into the feet, into the earth. And just a moment or two to breathe, maybe reflecting on yeah, do I tell the truth? Well, yeah, I tell the truth, yeah. Are you truthful in your yoga practice, in your action? Do you have negative thoughts? Are they healthful thoughts, positive thoughts, non-harming thoughts? Hmm. Another deep breath. You use your energy wisely. And now I invite you 
to breathe again, just into this moment. Notice your breath. Is it deep? Can you make it a little deeper? Can you expand a little more as you begin your inhale? Maybe a gentle, ah, a sigh. Letting go of the day. Letting go of yesterday. Letting go of what's to come. And, and just be here again in this moment. Feeling this breath emerge. You can only take that same breath once. Enjoy it. Be with it. Feel it. Feel it nurturing. All your energy centers align from the root chakra all the way up to the crown. Opening, showering white light of protection and healing around you. Mm, another breath. Another moment in time just to be. And again, let go of anything that does not serve you. Letting it go. Letting it go. Mm, and when ready, yeah, let's open up some new spaces within as we stretch up through the right arm and maybe then the right leg. Uh, left thigh up to the chest, a little wiggle here, maybe a little roll to the left, a little roll to the right. Yeah, that wiggle room is so important. <laughs> and then change to the other side when you're ready with a nice stretch, a nice yawn. Oh, another deep breath. Another wiggle side to side. Both arms, both legs. Mm, circling wrists, circling ankles. Yeah, warm up those wrists a bit. When you're ready to float those arms up and legs and arms up to the sky, yeah, shake them all about. Mm, nice deep breath here. And again, the first Japanese energy generating system, the vibration of it all. Kind of tense, isn't it? <laughs> And then shake it out again. Maybe the wibble wobble of the spine, the second Japanese energy generating practice. And just swivel, swivel the elbows along the floor, up and down, up and down, with the rest of the spine. Yeah, just following along with the movement. Let it swivel, relax the spine, your hips, your legs. And inhale, exhale. Let's bring feet and arms back down to center. Another deep breath here just to feel the tingling. Anything else you need to release? Hmm. And then feel where your body, yeah, thigh of your choice. And moving through it smoothly today, the hip stretch sequence. Thigh of your body's choice draped over. Again, just using your energy in moderation, not to press, not to have any guidance at all, but just right. The right effort. Stretching your supporting leg is a little more oomph if needed. But again, we go mindfully, we listen. We're being truthful to our bodies. We're not harming, just using the right amount of energy. And cupping hand upon the knee, yes, opening out to the side. Exhale, there. And then a few circles in each direction. Yeah, seeing where you might have to pause the movement. Seeing when it also feels uh, comfortable to reverse the circle. Uh, maybe a little erasing movement is needed. And when you're ready, when your body is ready, I should say thigh drapes over the chest for sit up posture of strength, of courage. Feel the support first of the standing foot. Rebound energy right up through the crown. 
exhale into the natal center, your sacral chakra area. But do relax your shoulders, remember? We're just reminding you. And any variation, uh, go to the variation that your body says, yes, I am ready for. Again, being truthful. Not harming. Be a little more vigorous of an exhale. <sighs> See where your arms need to be, your supporting leg. Maybe the foot needs to be put back down. Or maybe not. Maybe that leg can hover a little longer. But yes, we're Whatever your variations are, let's take another inhale, one more exhale into your courage, your confidence. And then when ready, yeah, supporting foot down, inhale, exhale, roll the back down. Oh, and just roll the head. Again, just the right amount of energy. It's not a turn, right, left, it's just a roll. Hmm, deep breath in. Deep breath out. And then coming back to center ankle over your supporting knee, lifting both thighs up is able, weaving that. Uh, if your right ankle is up, yeah, right arm would weave through. Mm, and where is your body telling you, oh, I'm a little tight here today? <laughs> yeah, right there. Can you send the breath there? Can you release there? Ah, yeah. Listening. And a little roll to the side. If right angle up, roll to the right, left, left angle up, roll to the right. And come to visualize. See inside. Where where does where is your body asking you to let go? So we listen. Yeah. Part of the non-harming aspect of the yamas as well. We listen. We let go there. Maybe a little roll side to side feels good, rolling your head in the opposite direction or leg up in the air. Mm -hmm. hmm, maybe turning the sole of the foot toward you. Yeah, with your opposite hand. Sometimes that brings the knee further out. It gives a little different of a stretch. Ah, but we breathe, we let go. Enjoy the moment. Mm, when about ready, yes, supporting foot lowers to stretch and yawn your working leg up to the sky with a nice ankle rotation, opening the channels of energy through your leg. Lots of energy channels called nadi in yoga, in the Sanskrit, reversing the circle, calves and shins. Yeah, still loving this. Absolutely. Flexing when ready. Feel how maybe tight things are feeling here. Yeah, let's shake it out again. Or maybe even the vibration. I know some of you do like the tapping. There's many energy practices that incorporate tapping. Mm, on the knee, front and back, sides, hamstrings, upper thigh, inner thigh. Yeah, you can spend all day doing this. <laughs> But when about ready, yeah, reclining hamstring stretch coming right up. Um, so let's get comfortable, shall we? Yeah, whether you're using a strap or a gentle clasp, we breathe slower, deeper, exhaling longer. In the article of the last, um, in the last module, energize, relax, renew. Um, yeah, it, it says, yeah, ah, exhaling maybe twice as long, right? Yeah. To relax, to release anxiety, we breathe, release the tension, maybe stretching your supporting leg, flexing foot, pointing foot, maybe a nice ankle rotation feels good. If PNF stretches, were interesting to you as we did a oh, before our vacation, spring vacation. Yeah, we might then clasp around the back of the thigh and as if you're pulling the leg closer to you, but then yeah, resisting. So you're as if you're pushing the leg down. So you might resist for a moment or two. And then you release the resistance and see, oh, maybe the leg can release a little higher. 
or closer toward you. Then we'll do that again. We'll take a deep breath and then feel the resistance. Hold breath. And exhale, release the resistance. And feel welcome to do that again as well. Then I just give a little, yeah, I'll release a little more of that edge. Well, maybe a little variation again of crossing over the midline, just a little bit. <laughs> and release, 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 breathe, 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 breathe. Oh. Yeah, keeping hip down first, right? And then, the, of course, the hip can lift if you want to go further, crossing over. Yeah, back to center. Maybe let's open out to the side a bit. Oh, and breathe. Opposite hip staying down, a little higher, a little up from the, oh yeah, that feels different too, doesn't it? Do -do -do. <laughs> a little wiggle room, and we breathe. Coming back to center. Let's just shake out this leg for the day. Or today. Put those feet back to the earth. Oh, yeah, feel any difference? Again, the moment in time. This is where we learn. This is where we become more aware of what's all happening inside and what our bodies, our minds need. More breath, I might say. I don't know. What do you think? So let's transfer the weight to that foot to bring the second thigh out, up and over, draping over. Again, not too fast, not too quick, but again, in the moment, we can feel when it can be draped further, stretching supporting way, using the right effort. The fourth yama, everything in moderation. Even to have fun, yeah. <laughs> Do you party all the time or or are you working all the time? Yeah, everything in moderation. Are you doing all strengthening postures or do you do flexing, a flexibility, postures of flexibility as well? Are you doing 20 rounds of, of um, sun salutation or maybe four or five? Yeah, everything in moderation. Cupping hand on the knee, it's open out to the side, and I center thigh stretch. Exhale, circling around slowly, noticing the lower back also, releasing. Listening to your body when it's time to reverse the circle. Remember, you can keep your hand there or release it. Hmm. Another breath. Inhale. When it's time to exhale the thigh back over the chest. Oh, please do so. Yeah, if that feels right for you. Sit up pose coming right up. Feel the support of the standing foot first. Inhale. Yep. Draw that breath all the way up to the crown and exhale into the core with a little more vigor on the ah, exhale. Let's see where your variations will take you. I know. I love to point and flex feet, maybe the hover up arms, maybe a little Pilates pulse, which I didn't mention on the first side. Yeah, with the Pilates pulse, the pulse of the arms, it also incorporates a little more pulse of the exhale, exhale, exhale. Mm, another breath or two here. See where your arms would easily go. Being truthful to your body, non-harming. And then when ready, supporting, put down, inhale, exhale, roll the back down. And again, just roll the head side to side. Does that feel good? Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully so. And then ankle over your supporting knee, lifting both thighs up if you're able, or the cushion underneath the foot, remember, weaving the arm through. Ah, oh, release, release, release. Left ankle up, a little roll to the right or vice versa. Feel more space there. I'm reminded of more space too on, on the fifth yama of um, 
non-greed or not taking more than you need and letting go. When we let go, even when you're cleaning out your closet, when you let go of things you don't need, there's more space there. Yeah, you don't need the tension there. So there's more space for the energy to flow that brings health and nourishment to our body, to that joint, those muscles. Hmm, maybe a little roll side to side, rolling the head in the opposite direction. It's kind of like a baby spinal twist, isn't it? Yeah. And gently back to center, supporting the down and stretch your leg up to the sky if able. A nice circle of the ankle, open the toes, say hello to each and every one of them. Ah, another deep, slow breath. Just because, yeah, nothing else to do, no place to go, just to be right here. And as you flex the foot, yeah, assess hamstrings. Yeah, you might want to shake out a little bit more or continue in the tapping. Maybe a quick wrist scrub. Mm, whatever feels good. And when ready, yes, reclining hamstring stretches, just knocking at the door. <laughs> so a gentle clasp, we're using a strap, a deep, slow breath. A gentle exhale, maybe out through the mouth, relaxing jaw, neck, back, hamstring. Remember that ripple effect of relaxation. Uh, we breathe. And breathe again. Maybe a little PNF hamstring stretch here, clasping the back of the thigh. Take a deep breath. Hold breath just gently as you resist, pulling up, pushing down. Yeah. And exhale, let go of the resistance. See what happens. Yeah, a little more room, maybe. One more time. Inhale, resist, hold breath. And exhale, let go of that resistance and see maybe that leg can reach up a little longer. Gently, yeah, maybe a little variation, bringing the leg over toward the midline an inch or two. See where that edge is. Remember, we're listening. Everything, using our energy wisely the right effort and in doing the right effort we are non-harming the first yama and being truthful the second yama as we listen to our body's truth mm. and then opening out to the side see where it feels good straight out from the hip or maybe a little bit lower maybe a little higher opposite hip staying down here Mm, feel good. Letting go. Maybe another exhale out through the first lips. And when it comes back to center, yeah, let's just shake it all about. Let's bring both legs up there and shake them both on oh, both arms. Yeah, it just feels good. <laughs> And speaking of legs, yeah, you know, let's just take a little movement of these legs, getting them all both warmed up again to support to support us in our bridge, maybe wheel today. Again, working up to it, the bridge does help us to work up to it and also strengthen the arms. So if you really are interested in the wheel, again, go at your own pace. And if you're not into the wheel yet, um, yeah, maybe more strength in the arms is needed. Maybe more planks in your yoga practice that you do on your own as well as this one, of course. Okay, did you reverse the cycle? Okay, let's reverse our legs going in the opposite direction. Maybe the, a larger cycling through the feet and toes as well. Maybe then a little faster. And then shake it out of that a bit. <laughs> Both feet back to the earth, 
Oh, great, wonderful bridge. Ooh, do you feel them? They're alive and well, your legs. <laughs> Let's get the spine moving a little more by inhaling to scoop on up. And the exhale, rolling on down, vertebra by vertebra. Oh, does that feel good? Yeah, now if it doesn't, again, do less. If it feels really good, maybe lift a little higher. Exhale, slowly, still lengthening out through the crown, out through the tailbone. Yeah, maybe the arms can lift up with you on the inhale. Exhale, slowly rolling on down, vertebra by vertebra, lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. When ready, yeah, strengthening phase. Feet, uh, remember, are hips width apart, toes straight forward. Inhale, ideally your knees are over your ankles. I know that's kind of hard to see. That's why sometimes mirrors come in very handy. <laughs> you might roll the palms up, shoulder blades a little closer, yeah. Forward the spine, interlace fingers, chest expansion arms might feel really good. Inner thighs active. Mm, nice deep breath here. I know some of you can lift the pelvis even higher to support the pelvis with the heel of your hand. Now to have any variation of leg lifting, some of us might have to place the palms down for a little more support. But again, you can lift maybe a foot off, I'm just reviewing these variations. Mm, maybe keep it off or maybe ankle that over the knee, keeping pelvis level. See how that feels. Or maybe stretch that leg. Ah, maybe that foot has to come down. <laughs> you can hold each of these variations for a few breaths. Keep it breathing, keep it strong from the bottom foot, bottom leg. And when the leg straightens, if you're taking this variation, reach it out long. Inhale, exhale, both feet back down to the earth when ready. And then we're gonna roll on down, slowly, 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 slowly. Eyes to the chest, a wonderful counter pose. Yes, to the bridge. Now for those that are going to go into the wheel or going to cry as well. Yeah, again, you might um, also warm up the wrists just by circling or interlace fingers. This also, um, this variation, as you know, also then gets the elbows and the shoulders involved as well. You can reverse that circle too. Kind of like a dance, isn't it? <laughs> Ah, so for those that are going into the wheel, and yeah, I my head isn't coming off these days. I don't know why. I think I need to do more planks too, more strengthening in my arms, biceps, triceps, shoulders. <clears throat> so fingertips again, point toward the shoulders. Feet come closer into the hips for your wheel posture. That may help. And we're going to inhale. Oh, guess what? For those that are not doing the wheel or trying to Ah, we still have the bridge up and down to go into. So there's always something we can do. Okay, wheel people. <laughs> so let's inhale and then lift down up, lift that navel up, press down into the hands, lengthening, breathing, lifting. Lift that navel a little higher. Another deep breath. When ready to come down, we're gonna slowly roll down, yeah, chin in, and then roll through the back slowly, 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 and then thighs to the chest. Again, counter pose, so nice, so nice. Ah, another deep breath. Mm. And yeah, let's just roll on over to the side, coming to a seated posture. For today, I also wanted, as I mentioned in the beginning of our class, a new breathing pattern, new breathing practice. And this breathing practice, we're going to uh, eventually, if you wish, to practice during our yoga postures. Alternate nostril breathing is usually a practice all into itself. And 
but your jai breath is a practice. Yeah, you continue to practice as you perform your postures. But it does take a while for it to be that comfortable and that, yeah, it becomes the more you practice anything, yeah, the more comfortable it gets. So the Ujjayi breath, sometimes called the victorious breath, and uh, there, or, or the ocean breath, is you make the sound kind of like an ocean. The breathing is in through the nose and out through the nose. So the mouth is relaxed, closed through this breath. We do make this sound as we breathe. And the sound inside also brings our awareness inside. So sometimes the Ujjayi breath can be used to, to focus more inside as you practice your asanas. And it also helps to bring more heat into the body, more focus, uh, and also more calm. Yeah. And also known to, to cleanse uh, your spinal column of, of tension. So it opens your spine. Connects also, uh, some say, uh, all the energy centers are more in balance, more in balance. So you jive breath. So, yeah. in the Ujjayi breath, there's a gentle, mm, I don't want to say constriction, I want to say almost just saying the word ha as you inhale, but you close your mouth. So, if you say ha, <laughs> but now close your mouth, you, you feel it's like a Darth Vader sound. Oh, I'm exhaling, actually. You feel that? I don't know if you can hear me. I'll come closer to this microphone. <laughs> Even as you inhale, you as if you're saying the word, maybe A-H, ha, ah, ah. But inhale. And uh, exhale. As I do it, if I, as I try to do it louder, I'm disordering it in my own practice of the Ujjayi breath. There's a wonderful YouTube about it as well. So it's not a forceful breath. You just gently say the word. I would just say ha as you inhale and exhale. That would be fine, but close your mouth. So you're inhaling as you say the word ha and exhale saying the word hop with your mouth closed. And let's keep doing that for a few breaths. I don't know if you could hear that, but I tried to come closer to the microphone. Yeah, and, and it brings this wonderful rhythm also. And it does take practice. I must confess, I do not use this breath a lot. I do it at certain times. I feel like okay, I really need to be more present. I need to be more attuned. I need to be focusing inside more than I am. And I know that the Ujjayi breath can help. Sometimes when you take class on the outside world in person, yeah, <laughs> you might hear uh, uh, that others in the class are, are using this breath as well. And just know if you hear this this wonderful ocean sound that it's helping not only them as they feel 
energy released and more open and warm and more calm, a lot of energy transfers to the room to a more calm, more peace of mind, just feeling. So in our forward head to knee today, let's try, let's try to breathe uh, the Ujjayi breath, shall we? Okay. So one leg of your choice out long, sole of the foot to your inner thigh. Let's pull back that hip to align chest over thigh. Saying the word ha, we inhale, mouth closed. And exhale. Tipping the pelvis forward, long spine, and then relax the shoulders, the arms, your mind. Maybe you are feeling a little more heat inside. Maybe just that sound is bringing you a little deeper insight. Withdraw of the senses. Yeah, since you're bringing your awareness to the breath, to how your body feels. But again, just breathe where it feels right for you and how. I am a little more, oh, speaking being of, of attached. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, speaking of the, the fifth uh, yama of non-greed and, and uh, of hanging on to things, maybe uh, uh, taking more than you need and, and, and being held to attachments more not, and let them go. Maybe I need to let go of my, Oh, a nice soft exhale, but I real my body responds very nicely to the. But right now, I'm going to take the ocean breath. Two more breaths here, maybe pointing the foot, flexing, clasping the foot, or any other variation. Maybe reaching on the outside of the ankle. And breathe. Ah, it is nice. <laughs> so let's level the shoulders again if you're reaching outside, outside of the ankle. And then let's just roll up through the spine, inhaling and, and just breathing where it feels comfortable for you. We might take the Ujjayi breath in stages. Now, I know some of you practice it, have practiced it for years. For those that are brand new to it, I think most of us are brand new to it. Let's just practice a little bit at a time, okay? So other side, yeah, stretch that leg, sole of the foot to your inner thigh as high as you can. Bring that hip back, inhale. Tipping the pelvis forward, we exhale. Now it is totally up to you if you want to continue with the Ujjayi breath or continue in a slow, deep breath that we have been doing, maybe an exhale out through the mouth a few times. <laughs> For me, that helps a lot because then it relaxes the jaw, the neck, the back, the hamstrings, yeah. But the bit, Ujjayi breath, the victorious breath, the ocean breath, yeah, is very powerful. It is, it is, no doubt about it. So we breathe. Pointing foot, flexing, ah, maybe clasping. Maybe not. Yeah. See if you're there. Crossing over the midline, outside edge of the ankle, reaching forward. Then our shoulders are not level. But we release. So you let go. We honor the edge. Mm, and maybe bringing shoulders back to level. Another breath here. And gently walking up. Mm, feet before you. Wonderful uh, reverse table. Oh, how are your wrists? Maybe into fists, thumbs forward toward you. Inhale, pressing down, lift it on up. Mm, any variation here? Yeah, you might, you know, lift that foot or stretch the leg. Deep breath. Oh, maybe your dry breath is good more on strengthening postures for you today. Maybe ankle over the knee, lift it on up. 
if one leg has been worked, yeah, maybe then the other one. Yeah, one in the supporting leg, foot. Yeah, see where the other leg needs to go. Mm, maybe both feet back to the earth. And exhale, slowly down. And just drape the chest over. Hmm, and let's roll over to hands and knees, shall we? Okay, for the arm and leg bowing. Slowly, we're going to stretch opposite arm and leg. And reach long, core active. <laughs> Whether you want to continue with the Ujjayi breath or not, again, totally up to individual members of the class. Inhale, let's lift a little higher. Exhale, cat breath. Drop the head. Inhale, stretching out from your navel center out to the fingers, out to the toes. Pull it all in, so push away the floor. Inhale, yeah, bring it in. Getting a cramp there. <laughs> Inhale, stretch it out longer, longer, longest. And then, yeah, bend the knee. We're going to reach way around for the bow, clasping foot if able. Inhale, we're going to lift the thigh, lift the heart. And exhale, release the clasp, stretch the leg, leg lifting higher as you bow. Speaking of strength, yeah, you can take another breath or two here too if you need a little more strength. And then push your way to the floor. Inhale and exhale. Uh, yeah, let's today, let's bring that knee right in now yeah, for pigeon pose, shall we? Okay, bring that knee in. I have to just switch to my other side. But the leg that was back, yeah, you bring that knee forward for pigeon. We're going to sit on the knee that is bent in front, that hip, sitting on the hip as much as you can. And then bring the back leg hip forward to the floor. Exhale. If you need a little more stretch, you might open that knee a little bit. Yeah, or keep it bent where it was. Yeah. See how that feels. We're going to place the hands down and inhale, lift the heart. And exhale, draping the chest over. Long spine. We're reaching longer. Pause where you need to. See if the Ujjayi breath works here for you. Maybe the chest can drape over the thigh. Maybe a little lean to the right, a little lean to the left. Maybe tuck those toes under. And we stretch that leg a little further, the back leg. Mm, and soften now, soften, soften. Let go of any tightness today. Let go of any tension. And gently walk the hands back on either side of the knee. Lift it on up. I don't know, some of you might be able to lift the arm, lift it up, the knee that's bent. Yeah, maybe not. Some of us might be able to bend the back knee and clasp the foot like bow. Yeah, we have that. If you're able, I'm not, I'm just sort of <laughs> pretending. Mm. Or maybe we need to keep both hands. Another deep breath and exhale ah, for our other side. Ah. Remember the other side is? <laughs> so let's uh, stretch slowly, opposite arm and leg. Push away the floor, starting with the top. Easy breath into the core. Lifting a little higher, hot breath, push away the floor. Now draw the knee in, elbow in. To bring my hand back, shoulder, yep, yeah, still over the wrist here. Inhale to stretch now out through the fingers, out to the toe. Pull it all in. Drop the head, knee, head, elbow. Inhale to stretch way around. Reach, bend the back knee into the bow. We lift the heart, inhaling, 
lift the thigh. Remember, heel is off the butt. In every bow we do, inhale and exhale into the bow. Elbows point to the back. They stay close to your ribs. Forehead is hovered. And we breathe. Another deep breath. Inhale to lift. And exhale. Yeah, let's bring again that back knee forward. <laughs> Personally, I have to do the same side. <laughs> but this is your other knee forward, right? Okay. Ah. Adjust any adjustments that needed. I have mentioned that maybe if your hip does not go to the floor, maybe you can put a little padding underneath there. That might help. And then we're going to inhale, lift the heart. Bring that hip forward, back leg hip forward. Exhale, creeping longer over your thigh. Walking gently, keep breathing. Maybe just come to elbows. Maybe you can reach a little further. Maybe a little roll to the right, a little roll to the left. Flexing the back foot might feel good and stretch out through the heel. Another breath. We're going to walk the hands up on either side of the knee, lifting the heart. Again, maybe lifting the arm. Maybe not. Maybe bending that back knee. Can you clasp the foot? Almost. <laughs> Maybe both together. Ah. And then hands back to the earth. And now let's come to hands and knees once again, tucking toes under, hips sway high, push away the floor. Yep, walking the dog. Ah, lengthen the spine. Lengthen your legs, your arms, your fingers, inner elbows toward each other. Mm, feet then together, stretching one leg up high to the sky. Push away the floor, top knee bends. Rotate that knee up to the sky, twisting. Maybe next time we'll, I'll talk you into the flip. And then return the hips level, reaching, and then back to all fours. Other leg stretching up higher, higher, highest. Push away the floor, bending the top knee. Top knee lifts to the sky, and you twist toward that side. Hip, waist, shoulder, head. Ah, nice twist. And then untwist, back, reach high with that leg. And then back to a wide angle dog or back into it. Yeah. Or a wide angle dog, which you haven't done yet today. So let's open the legs wider. Ah, push away the floor. Nice deep breath. Speaking of twisting, let's walk the hands back right underneath your nose. Right hand down, right underneath your nose, shoulder over the wrist. To twist, inhale, exhale, hip, waist, shoulder, head. Push away the floor. Nice deep breath here. Another breath, maybe to wrap it around. And then let's stretch up high to untwist hip, waist, shoulder, head, replacing that hand, shoulder over the wrist. Inhale, exhale as you. Spiral, hip, waist, shoulder, head. Or wrapping it around the waist. Reaching for your inner thigh. Another deep breath. When ready to inhale, let's stretch that arm high. Then exhale, hip, waist, shoulder, head. Your wide angle forward fold. Ah, exhale. Relax the head. Yeah, shake it out. Take out some of those thousands and thousands of thoughts we think daily. They say about 60,000 thoughts. And then swing the chest over to one thigh. Clasping outside of ankle. Swing the chest over to the other thigh. Exhale. 
And then back to center. We'll wiggle the feet in and out, in and out. And feet underneath you. Yes, hips width apart. We're going to slowly roll on up to standing hip. <laughs> then the waist, then the upper back. Oh, the neck is long. Um, standing on your own two feet once again. Very root chakra esque. Feel the feet underneath you. Mm -hmm. Nice deep breath to bring down the heavens. We inhale. And exhale, palms facing downward. Yeah, truly cleansing all oh, that is not needed, does not serve you. Once again, bring in what does more peace, more calm, more energy, more fun, and release all the negativity and yeah, the disappointment and the angst. Let it go. One more time. Okay, inhale and exhale. Ah, thank you, thank you. So, standing tall, and um, I was just thinking of different perspectives in our lives, and that reminded me of eagle posture. There's been a lot of birds around my house and chirping and little baby doves being born, and then they sort of all disappeared, and, I, and, I, and maybe hopefully they will return. And so, being eagle posture, we did pigeon, eagle. Oh, oh, it might be birthday. I don't know. Okay, so let's stand on two feet. Ah, and let's cross maybe uh, yeah. left elbow over right to bend, to wrap. Remember, in eagle arms, we then have to reach the elbows out and then up. Kind of stretches the back of the heart a lot as well. Ah. Yeah, your, your palms might come together, they might not, but if possible, yeah, we're wrapping them around. And bend the knees. If your left elbow is up, we're going to transfer the weight to the left leg, foot. Yeah, knee is bent. And then wrap, yeah, cross the thighs. Maybe wrap the toes around if able. If balance is a little shaky, the toes can come down again, yeah. Or then wrap again. Easy breath to see either the forearms before you or maybe the bigger picture of the room, the bigger picture of your life, or the details. Mm -hmm. Another deep breath and exhale. Let's bring that back and roll the shoulders around. How's that feel? Other side. Okay. So right elbow over to bend, to wrap, to reach, to lift, to bend the knees. Transfer the weight, focusing yeah, on the point before you. That might just be your forearms. See where you can cross the thigh? Maybe, yes. Okay, maybe wrap those toes around. Maybe the elbows can reach out and up a little bit more. Maybe you need to breathe. Maybe you need to see the bigger picture of the room. Focusing, breathing. Ah, uh, another deep breath, and both feet back to the earth, unwrap, unwrap. Speaking of, yeah, now the shoulder, we, let's open in chest expansion, shall we? So let's open the legs, loading the arms up, open wide, interlacing fingers behind you or using a strap. We inhale to lift the arms, lift the heart. Yeah, lengthening over. You can keep knees straight or slightly bent. Maybe feel a wider apart. <laughs> Exhale, deep breaths here. You can try the Ujjayi breath again. Maybe then shifting weight to the left knee bending, right leg straightening. Uh, or exhale through the mouth. Inhale, center, and then shifting sides, then right knee bending, left leg straight. And back to center. We're going to lift the arms higher, higher, highest. Lengthening, <laughs> bang it into the wall. Lifting higher, exhale. Ah, release the fingers. Ooh, they're floating up. 
floating up in the breath of joy. So let's sniff in and in and in and really let go of all that does not serve you. All right. With a nice sniff in, we and and lift, exhale, let it go. And and lift, let it go. Once again. And and I lie once more in and in. And in, or down, and again, and in a little faster. And lift, exhale, and in, and in, and in, exhale. One more time. And, and, and this time, all the way down, all the way down. Before relaxation, I think Crow is calling me. <laughs> it is bird day. Okay, so coming down, hands before you, open your talons, we're gonna lift the hips, then the elbows. Remember in this variation of crow, the elbow is going right into the crease, not into the knee joint, but into the crease of your calf and the back of your thigh. So the elbow goes right into the crease, right into the crease. We look forward, not down. We look forward. And then maybe that foot can lift off into the balance. Maybe your other foot can lift off in the balance. Maybe both feet can lift off. You're looking forward. You're looking forward. Tap into the hands. Core active. Inhale. And then exhale. Both feet back down. And then let's come to our hips. Feet before us. We're going to roll on down. With a nice roll, we exhale. Thighs to the chest. And a little circle around. Circling around the sacrum. Arms down to reverse the circle using uh, more core muscles, or maybe legs straight to reverse the circle. <sighs> or maybe the infinity sign feels good. Mm, or maybe we just need to shake it all out again. Feet to the earth, arms down. <sighs> Deep breath in. And a deep breath out. I'm reminding my body is saying double sniff. Okay, double sniff with a sniff in. And a ha ha. This time out through the mouth for real. And two more times. Inhale. And a ha ha. One more time. And a ha ha. It's a blast. Uh -huh. A little roll of the head, a little roll of the knees, any other little wiggle room, maybe another little baby bridge. Ah. Uh, hmm, and breathe. And breathe again. You might imagine the most beautiful place in the world that you would like to either visit or relax into. Maybe it's the beach, maybe it's up in the mountains somewhere, maybe in another country somewhere, maybe in just in your own backyard, or maybe right where you are. It's the most perfect place for you right now to be. Mm, to be in the most safe, beautiful place that nurtures you, that you feel that nurturing, that you feel one with. Mm, just be, as I invite you to notice, observe your breathing. How does it feel now? What do you feel moving in your body as you inhale? What do you feel in your body as you exhale? I invite you to slow the breath, deepen the breath, observe the breath. Observe this breath as it becomes you. Observe the letting go as your face begins to soften, your jaw, your mouth, your cheeks, your ears, 
even your brain, just relaxing now, letting go. Letting go of any tension in your neck. Is there tension there? Hmm. Can you let go maybe a little further? If there is. Hmm, notice your shoulders. Are they already relaxed? Or can they relax a little more? Is the energy flowing down your arms? And can it flow a little more? Can you feel that warmth in your fingertips? That little buzz? Hmm. Can you feel your back breathe? Feel the lower back breathing. Can it expand just the lower back? Can you feel into the, the middle back? the upper back. And as you exhale, can, can you feel the letting go at a deeper level today? Can you feel the energy of your spinal column moving? There's a wonderful pulse there that's different than your pulse of your heart, the, the rhythm of your breath. It's the cerebro, cerebrospinal fluid pulse. Yeah. Maybe just visualize energy flowing fluidly through your spinal column. Deep breath in and out. And feel, feel the belly breathe and maybe all your internal organs. Do, do they need a little bit of extra nurturing today? Mm, did, have you breathed into your liver today? your spleen, your stomach, your kidneys, your adrenal glands sitting right on top of those kidneys. Breathing slower and deeper will nurture your adrenal glands. They get overworked at times. Yeah, so now let them rest. And breathing into your heart center. Listening to your heart. Listening to your truth. To be non-harming. To be truthful in all that you do. Say, be. Not to take what's not yours. Even ideas or time of others. Yeah, to be in moderation of your energy using the right effort. Moderation of all things. And not to take more than you need. Letting go of any attachments, allowing new possibilities and opportunities to flow through. Hmm. And rest now. Rest your pelvis. So energy can flow through your hip joint. Through your thighs. Let your thighs just hang loosely against the bone. Mm, and as the thighs relax, do you feel your knees following suit? Yeah, letting the kneecaps just float gently inside. Inhale, exhale. How are your calves feeling? Have they already been relaxed? Are they already, yeah, letting go? Or maybe you can let go a little bit more. Maybe the shin muscles, yeah. And how are your ankles feeling? Mm, have you breathed through your ankles yet today? Yeah, breathing through them, feeling the energy to flow through your, to your feet, tops of the feet, your arches, your soles of the feet. Get a little wiggle of toes. Mm, 
again a deep breath, a deep breath. Every cell functioning 100% potential from the tips of your toes to the crown of your head. And I'm reminded of a beautiful sunset. You might imagine one yourself, if you will. Then just before you, you gently, you know, just soften your gaze at the sunset before you, just visualizing it and breathing in the beautiful rays, the healing rays, the healing energy of the sun into your third eye and exhale it down the spinal column that's free and clear down into the earth energy, healing and breathing from the earth up to the spine, healing deeper and exhaling from your third eye out into the beautiful sun that is setting, that is calming, that's nurturing and breathing in the calming, nurturing energy of our sun and exhaling it down to the earth, unifying energy from above to below and through us, we are that conduit of beautiful healing that we give to every cell of our bodies. So I invite you to breathe. Mm, feel the healing energy from above, from below, and within as you surrender to this posture of relaxation. Hmm, surrendering more deeply as we exhale. And gently allowing every cell in your body and your mind and your spirit to remember just a more way of being uh, in the moment. Allowing your body to remember more of that healing state. Allow it to remember. Yeah, to slow down, to breathe. Having the muscle memory of relaxation, <laughs> of calm. Mm, and when ready, yeah, we're going to wiggle fingers and toes, a little stretch of your arms and your legs. And remember to roll to the right if you need more relaxation, because that stimulates the left nostril to breathe. Or roll to your left if you need more energy to stimulate your right nostril to breathe. That brings more energy. Yeah, or maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> But eventually, yes, coming to your seated posture for one more breath all together. Feel in the practice and to go off on our way. With an inhale, we scoop the energy from the earth and around us and above us. And the exhale, bringing it all. Thank you. Keep it going. Uh, any questions, let me know. And namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much.